Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar. My name is Mia Colson with the National Association of Regional Councils and this webinar is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy Sunshot Solar Outreach Partnership and today we're going to be talking about smart off-grid lighting and security. So I'm pleased to have Miriam Turk with me today. She's the co-founder and COO of Clear Blue Technologies and she's going to be providing um, a comprehensive overview of how smart off-grid lighting works as long as the local example of how it worked in Downers Grove, Illinois. But before I turn it over to Miriam, I'm going to provide a short introduction to the Sunshot Solar Outreach Partnership uh, along with some of our solar resources. Just a note, if you have a question during the presentation, please either raise your hand using the little hand button or type a question into the questions box on the control panel, and we're going to be saving all questions until the end of the presentation. Please also note we'll make the webinar available on NARC's website after the webinar is completed. So with that, let's get started. The Sunshot Solar Outreach Partnership, or SolarOp, is a U.S. Department of Energy program designed to increase the use and integration of solar energy in communities and regions across the United States. We do this primarily through outreach and education, producing case studies, holding workshops, um, exhibiting at conferences. And NARCIS has the pleasure to work with a variety of partners on this project, including the International and City County Management Association, ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability, along with the various other partners that you see represented on the screen. So through this project, NARC has developed multiple resources aimed at assisting local governments and regions to bolster their solar development. We have a handbook and resource guide that's um, for regional councils to help them in their solar development. And we're working on a second version of that handbook, so be on the lookout for that in the coming weeks. In addition, we have a variety of solar podcasts and webinars, case studies. We've been hosting a series of regional workshops. And all of that information can be found on our website at narc.org forward slash solar ops, OPS. Also, our partner website, solaroutreach.org, also contains a vast wealth of solar resources, including upcoming events, technical assistance, and even more podcasts and case studies. So I encourage everyone to check out both of these resources. This is my contact information in case anyone has any questions about NARC Solar Work or the Sunshot Solar Reach Partnership. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Miriam. Thanks, Mia. Um, so just to make sure the screen technology has switched over, can everyone see? I'm clicking on. Just switching the technology over. So can everyone see the Illumiant Smart Off-Grid? Mia, can you see the Illumiant Smart Off-Grid on my desktop? Yeah, it looks good. OK, great. All right, so um, we're going to be talking about um, solar and, uh, and or wind solar street lights. And we're going to talk about it in three phases. First of all, why you should start looking at off-grid systems as a, as, a total, as a business decision. Secondly, what are some of the key uh, business cases and, and things to think about from a business case perspective as to how you go about doing that uh, and things to consider there? And then why smart off-grid is an important uh, part of the solution when you're looking at off-grid. So um, Frost & Sullivan is forecasting that by 2020, 10% of all sol uh, street lights will be solar-powered street lights. And the question is, why is that happening? Um, in addition to people wanting to go green and take a green energy approach, um, which people have been wanting to do for a very long time, in the case of off-grid streetlights, now we're getting to the point where it is actually more cost-effective and cheaper to go with an off-grid streetlight rather than a regular power grid connected streetlight um, in many, if not most, applications. And there's really two reasons for that. One is that the cost of the grid is going up. Um, in the standard reduce, reuse, recycle, the best way to, um, uh, um, uh, the best uh, green energy uh, watt is the one that's never consumed or never required to be distributed. 
Um, and when you're dealing with, with street lights, you're, you're putting one every 100 feet. So you've got a lot of cabling and infrastructure just to go 100 feet um, and, and power what is now, with the adoption of LED technology, a third to a half the power draw. So you used to need a 200 or a 250 watt light. Now with LED adoption, you can do that same thing in under 100 watts. And once you go under 100 watts, the off-grid version becomes practical. From a price perspective, it's cheaper than the cost of that cabling and infrastructure. Um, and um, you know, you only need one solar panel. Sometimes you need two if you're in a northern region um, um, or a wind solar solution. So off-grid makes sense now because it's not only is it green, but it's a good and compelling business case and actually cheaper. So now that that's the case, and, and we're not just doing kind of environmental, let's do it, but, but do it at a loss, now that it's actually making economic sense, both from a one-time capital as well as an ongoing operating perspective, now you're starting to move to mainstream. And instead of having niche specialized systems that you, like you had in the early days, um, the technology has evolved to the point where the next generation is smart off-grid. So it's a well-engineered system. Um, and it's highly reliable, easy to install, easy to maintain and monitor, um, because you don't need to have any specialist people at the point where you're building the system. And the reason you don't need to have any specialized expertise um, in, in doing that installation or doing that ongoing maintenance is because it's fully remotely controlled and remotely monitored. And then the second reason is because you are monitoring that, that system 24 by 7 and you can remotely control it, now it's highly reliable. So I, I like to tell the story. I ask people when I'm in the room, how many of you have bought solar lighting for your gardens? And how many of them find that 50% of the time or more they don't work? Um, and obviously, when we move into the infrastructure of a you know downtown location in, 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 um, in Monterey or Nashua, New Hampshire, or anywhere else, um, it's got to be fully engineered, highly reliable. And because Smart Grid is here today, you now have that capability for off-grid. So it's a proven technology that you can prove that works to, uh, for people. And my screen will go forward. Don't you just love technology people who can't use technology? OK, so what is Smart Grid, uh, Smart Off-Grid? So Smart Off-Grid simply gives you the ability to fully remotely manage, remotely monitor, and control the off-grid system. So through the internet and cloud computing and the advancements of cellular and smartphone technology, every one of the Illumiant off-grid streetlights is remotely controlled and monitored from a dashboard. In a few minutes, I'm going to do a demo, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to go in and control the system in Chicago, in uh, California, um, in New York State, in Australia. And it's completely managed um, remotely, which means that you can perform maintenance perform operations, configure the light profile, and, and have very sophisticated lighting management capability all from your desktop without having to go to the pole and um, uh, do the work manually. And that's what makes it smart. Um, it also starts to become very intelligent, sending you alarms and notifications. So instead of you having to figure out something's wrong, it tells you when something is wrong. So with that in mind, um, where would you think about putting an off-grid street light? Um, the projects that we've been doing and where we see the most interest in marketplace is residential street lights. Downers Grove is a great example. And that actually wasn't even a new subdivision. That was a retrofit into a 35-year-old subdivision that, when it was built, did not have street lights. Um, downtown decorative corridors, um, we have many customers who want decorative lighting. They go through a lot of trouble from an architectural. And one of the unique things about Illumiant is we don't come pre-spec with only a specific light. You can generally pick whatever light you have already standardized in your town or community. And you've got a whole bunch of them that are grid connected. And now you want a few off-grid, and you want it the same look and feel. So if you want a decorative high-end light or a certain standard look and feel, you can have that. Um, pathways, parking lots, and parks are also big applications. Uh, park areas specifically, because generally there isn't power there. And so it, you know, those business cases are, are you know, really compelling. We did a project for the city of Toronto last year where uh, the quote for power was uh, 600, uh, over $600,000. And going with the off-grid system was like twenty dollars to $30,000. So they saved a significant amount of money from that perspective. And then really anywhere 
where your cost of trenching and cabling is expensive and getting power to that pole is a viable application for off-grid systems. Um, lighting is really a security application and interestingly enough uh, what we're also finding is many of these systems are starting to support multiple applications. So um, security monitoring system is an option we provide. You can get an, an Illumina off-grid street light with a security camera capability and um, because you've got smart off-grid, you can remotely manage and control the security camera separate from the light. So the light will go on and off at night um, and versus the daytime, the security camera you keep on all day. Um, and uh, if you need to do a remote reboot or if you need to turn the lights up, bright, brighten them or dim them as a result of a security event, all of that type of communications integration is something that Illumiant can bring to the table. So. You may have heard that Toronto had a major uh, flood event this week. It was actually quite an interesting experience. We, we had our, our own Hurricane Sandy many years ago that actually devastated the community. And um, that hurricane hit us for over three days when it hit us. And in Toronto on Monday, we got the same amount of rain in the one hour that we got with that hurricane that lasted three days that devastated the, the, the city uh, previously. Um, the main hit area happened to be uh, in a location where we already had an off-grid light and our customer, this is Perennial Solutions, they have a parking lot, a security light and camera um, because they had a lot of vandalism in the parking lot with um, big transport trucks coming through there and uh, apparently there was no power and no street lights for a 15 mile radius except for our light. So one of the things when you're dealing with climate change infrastructure and all of the flooding and all of the, the weather events that we have that's a really good consideration as a, as a community safety and reliability is, you know, it, it provides a level of redundancy. Now if you have a problem and you lose the grid, if you have a couple of off-grid street lights in your area, you basically have redundancy of two different power sources and the systems are, are, are on. And in addition to that, you're still able to be, um, you know, respectful of your budget and 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 the taxpayer dollar because it's a cheaper system than and a grid connected system, and you're being green and it's environmental and all that kind of stuff. So there's a significant amount of community benefits for the project. Um, one of the things that's also happening in the industry that you should be aware of, and we're seeing this happen over and over again as communities start to roll out new projects, do LED lights. Um, or do retrofits, they think, okay, I'm reducing the power draw, I'm going to go back to my power utility and get them to drop the price. The only problem is the power utility has actually never been charging you what it's actually costing them to actually support that light. The cost of distribution is the biggest cost of power and, you know, dedicated 100% for you cabling every 100 feet for a street light is something that they have never really been adjusting. So there's a lot of policy uh, positions coming out and policy directives coming out in various different jurisdictions where they're basically saying going forward we're going to right size the energy cost and what you're actually going to be paying for street light power and service and support from us is actually going to go up over time. So those ongoing expenses can be deferred by going with off-grid. So let's take an example. I, I talked about an extreme example a few minutes ago, which was the city of Toronto, and that was a real business case, $650,000, I think it was, if they wanted to go with a power system because they needed a new connection to the grid. There was every known right of way, you know, telecom, cable, and gas and power, uh, gas and water, etc. And then, you know, additional cabling required with new transformers. So it was an expensive business case. This is an example from uh, taken from the Downers Grove numbers. So if you were, and this is for uh, Chicago, Illinois, so these are U.S. numbers. But if you're looking at a smart off-grid solution versus, for let's take an example, you're a homeowner association or a municipality and at the gate entrance to a new subdivision, you want to put three or four poles there. Well, what are your costs in your business case going to be? Well, if you do a look at the left column, you're dealing with what's your pot cost to get it from you know regular grid smart. So the cost of the pole and the installation is about the same, um, you know. But now you've got to buy the distribution panel, the controller, uh, um, um, uh, and all of those things. Sorry, I'm just getting confused here. You need the, the uh, distribution panel, the controller with smart grid technology because now you want smart grid as well. You want a concrete pad, trenching. Um, and trenching and cabling costs 
uh, vary significantly. The general rule is it's anywhere from uh, $20 per foot, but more regularly it starts at about $70 or $80 per foot and goes up to as much as $200 per foot. So what's the difference? If you're dealing with a farm in Iowa and it's clear dirt ground, you're looking at $20 per foot. Um, if you have any paving and concrete cutting that you need to do, paving is $59 a foot, concrete cutting and removal is $1,000 per day, and that can add $70, $80. So most applications will see something in the order of $70 to $100 per foot for the trenching and, and, and cabling, but it can be as low as $20 a foot. So we've taken a worst case scenario here cost of the cabling itself, and then the electricity cost. So a, a regular utility system would be $34,000. Now if you look at an off-grid solution, you still need the pole and the power, the $4,000 um, uh, and uh, $1,000 for that. You don't need the distribution panel and, and, and the grid. You don't need a concrete pad because it's a drill and drop pole. The system from Illumia, basically it's just like putting in a fence post. You just drill and drop the pole. You don't have to build any special concrete pads. No trenching, no paving and concrete cutting. One of the big benefits of these projects is the time and the, co the cost of construction disruption. If you're going to be doing cabling and trenching, it's going to create a lot of construction and delays and the building permit time is quite quick versus you know a few hours to drill and drop a pole. It's a hidden economic benefit that's not taken into consideration here. Then you add in the off-grid components of the system, which is about $3,000, $3,400 per pole if you were just doing two poles. So for two poles, it would be about $6,900. Um, you do have to replace the batteries. Um, and there's a cost for that. And then the maintenance on the lights and the ballast uh, is about the same. And so here's an example where you're looking at 50% savings if you go with smart off-grid versus grid-connected system of $34,000. Every business case needs is standard and you, you know, different. And, and you know, there isn't, it isn't standard. So you've got to look at your own business case. But this hopefully gives you some information. If you want some assistance in doing your business cases, it's something we love to do with customers is walk through. It helps us to learn. So if you want some more detailed information about what all the component costs and considerations are, we, we'd be happy to help you with that. Once you've built and installed the system and your one-time capital cost has been taken into consideration, then you uh, also have the ongoing. And from an ongoing perspective, um, you want to manage the system and make sure you get the life out of the system. We uh, tell people that you're going to get about five years of life out of your battery system in the pool. Um, we think it might actually go up to seven years with our system, but we, we tell people five, as long as you're able to remotely manage and maintain it. And every once in a while, a battery needs an equalized charge, you know, to basically to top it up and, and keep it healthy. And, you, and Horizon, our, our remote management system, looks at that, and, uh, and we can make sure that the, the equalized charge is done when it needs to be. One of the things about off-grid lighting is that the location of the pole is dictated by where you need light, not where it's the best for the solar panel. So we have lots of customers who do an installation, but there's a tree in the way or there's a building in the way, um, and, and but they still need a light. And so oftentimes it means just changing the, the hours of operations a little bit. So you might, for example, have the light at 100% power, what you want it the whole time, except from 2 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the morning, you dim it to 70%, you know, so that you're, you drop the power by about 30%. And the interesting thing is to the naked eye, oftentimes you can't even tell the difference at you know, the first 20 to 30% dimming. Um, uh, so we have a sophisticated light profile, which we'll show you, um, that gives you the tools to basically adjust for the application. No matter where you are in North America, you have brutal weather. You have brutal winters, you have brutal summers, and both of those extreme events, um, or cloud or rain, um, can affect the service level, and the system has the ability to basically um, respond to that. And then there's all the preventive maintenance. So if you have a soil, a, a soil panner that gets dirtied, or there's a hail that hits it or something, you know, that, that stuff happens. We all have to do maintenance, but it's really nice to be able to do a remote solar panel short, short circuit test. So there's a problem with the system. You're standing at the bottom of the pole. How do you know what's going on with the solar panel at the top? With Horizon, you just log in, you run a, a test, and you can understand, you know, whether the, sort, the solar panel has been damaged, whether it's dirty, um, and then schedule the proper maintenance for it. 
Um, so instead of three service calls for a problem, the first service call to identify what the problem is, the second one to actually fix it, and then the third one to uh, go and do the you know double check to make sure it's okay. Um, then uh, you only need to have one uh, from that perspective. And of course, then there's no utility bills. So Downers Grove um, is an interesting case study. Uh, Kevin Bobakiewicz um, gives his regrets. We had hoped to have him on the webinar today, but he asked me to, to mention to you um, he would very much love to talk to anyone who wants to know about his experience. He regularly works with other communities in, in, in America to help them. Um, so he worked on this project. It's a community that's about 22 miles west of Chicago. Um, they decided that they wanted to go with hybrid wind solar lighting for best year-round operations on to dusk. It's a nice windy city. Um, and they installed 25 systems in March of 2010. The results were that they saved over $100,000 in electricity and maintenance costs over the life of the system, uh, lots of green energy credits from uh, CO2 emissions. The installation was quick and easy. The Illumion system comes as a kitted system that you just plug in, you know, the, the cables like a kit. So I, the way I like to describe it is anybody who buys a smartphone can plug in the smartphone into their computer to charge it and get it all ready because it only plugs in one way and you don't need to read a manual to do it. And illumion has been designed the same way. It's all kitted, color-coded, and things only plug in one way. So you get this system and you do not need to have any electricians or any specialist people to do the install. It's click, click, click. All of the configuration and tuning of the system is done remotely by Horizon, which we can help you to do, or if you have your own technicians who want to do that, you don't have to do that standing in front of the pole um, um, uh, from that perspective. Uh, and of course, it, it eliminates months on the, on the construction side because of the elimination of cables and trenching and you know, uh, building permits and that kind of thing are simplified, um, and you're not running into the interference of other systems. Um, Downer Grove, Downers Grove is quite proud of the fact that they won a Technical Innovation Award um, and they've had quite a positive experience, which is why Kevin's very happy to share with you um, what their experiences have been if you're interested. So now I'm going to do a small demo of uh, Horizon, our off-grid software. And uh, as you can see here, it's a nice little map with a dashboard. Um, and if you go in and you click on a certain location, um, we're going to go into Downers Grove and take a look at um, that system. It's kind of a little bit neat. So if I now click on satellite, and I even put a person right there. I hope I put it in the right place. You can even see the pole. So there's the, there's the street light at that location. Google's been very kind enough to have their street view updated, and you can see the system, which is kind of nice. When you're looking at that system, if you click on this poll, it actually brings up the configuration. So I am going to go right back here and take you into another system just because it's a newer version of the software, so you can see some interesting things. So this one is Earl Rowe Provincial Park in uh, Ontario. One of the things that's interesting about that, we have a lot of systems around the Great Lake. We have a lot of systems in, you know, along the Canada-US border, and so we're quite familiar with, with winters in Wyoming and, and Chicago and lake effect snow in, in Buffalo. These systems have been engineered for that as well as you know, heavy-duty sunlight, such as in Kernville, California. So I clicked on Earl Row and I get a configuration. This system happens to be a wind solar system. It's got an LED, one LED light, could have more. Um, right now I've got the latest bat, you know, in, indication and information. My battery's in good shape. I've got the voltage of the wind and the solar. And I've got some general statistics here about how the system is working, how much power it's generated. The system's got lots of reporting capabilities, so if I wanted to see you know, what the statistics were for this month, It'll update it and tell me that so far this month I've saved 11.4 pounds of, of carbon energy. One of the things that we do when we look at systems is we track weather. And the reason for that is when you're standing in front of the pole and it's only getting 150 watts out of a 250 watt solar panel, um, you know, that there are, there are situations where that doesn't make sense and the system's broken, or there are situations where it totally makes sense and, and wind, uh, sorry, weather 
cloud cover, temperature can have impact. So we, we track the weather and indications from that perspective. It also allows us to track performance over life. So if you're a municipality and you think you have a really nice windy area, you might have micro winds. You know, you have micro, winds are micro winds in this size when you're talking about a, a, a pole. And so we can track the history and actually learn over time how your system is going to perform. Um, for those of you who are in the technical side, um, and I'll show you in a minute what the, what the marketing side will see, but from a technical side perspective, um, you would start with the All Systems Dashboard Report. And um, it actually shows you two different indicators. So when, you know, you know how when you charge a battery, the voltage will go up, but at a certain point in time, it's even though the voltage has gone up, it's not fully charged. So we actually uh, measure what, how it's doing right now, and then we kind of take a measurement over time on this left side to tell us how it's performing over time. One of the things that's very interesting, and remember I said that you have to put the light where you actually need light, not where it's good solar panel. If you look at Downers Grove 1, 2, 3, and 4, what you'll see here is that for 1 and 2, the battery's actually looking pretty good, but 3 and 4, it's stressed a little bit, even though we've had sunny weather. And the reason for that is because um, they have some poles that are in really tough locations. They've got you know, a lot of, 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 of sun uh, blockage from, from, um, uh, from trees and that kind of thing. And so this is one of the reasons why smart is so important in off-grid, because you can have four poles going down one street and have different poles with different performance. And you need the tools to be able to deliver the service level to your customers. So we might take Downers Grove, and it works fine in the summertime. But in the wintertime, we might dim it in the middle of the night so that it doesn't go out totally or run out of battery energy from that perspective. When you are looking at the system and wanting to do maintenance or understand how there's a problem you know, or look at how it's performing, you're going to want to look at detailed information. And I'm not going to go through too much of this more because I'd probably lose you. Um, but just to understand the level of detail we get, th this is the performance for today at McMaster. And you can see um, we take many different measurements real time. So the last measurement was at 2.25 Eastern, and it's 2.30 Eastern time right now. We take all of these different me me measurements. We take battery me me measurements, we take um, solar and wind measurements, and then we take load measurements. And we track this over time so that we can see how things are performing. If I had a problem in a certain area where something wasn't working properly, I can zoom in to take a look at it. Or if I want to customize my report um, to not have you know, every piece of information, I can take those off and just look at those things. That's important when you're into maintenance. When you're dealing with systems that don't have any issues and you're just trying to figure out how it's all working properly, you might look at the monthly report. And now the monthly report tells you how the system has been doing. So this is, this is um, uh, over the last 10 days of July, um, P1 is and P2 would be solar panels, P3 would be wind, load one and load two, and you can see how much energy is generated and how much energy is um, consumed. And um, you can see how things perform. So it gives you some good indications of how it's working. Um, when you do the installation, your installer wants to stand in front of that pole and know that everything is going to work. And when he does that, He's got a smartphone in front of him, and instead of having you know 14 different meters trying to measure what's the battery doing and how's L1 the load doing, all he has to do is bring up his phone, this little screen through a web link, and it tells him real time how it's performing. And this is a real time measurement, so every periodically, and you can see the actual timestamp here, it just changed from 31 to 41. It actually gives you the real time measurement, and what this means is that you can make sure that the customer is having um, you know, know that the installation is working properly before you actually leave the system. Um, on the control side, there's really two areas. One is the energy management control. And in this particular case, I, I won't spend too much time on it, but you can configure it for the batteries that you've decided to buy. You can configure it for when you want to go into safety shutoffs and those kinds of things. And, and we make sure that it's a calibrated system so you're getting good, good things. So this is the electrical aspect from a settings perspective. And then um, on the load management side, um, let me just click on Earl Rowe here trying to find it. We have a new 
and then click on Earl Row. So we support probably the most sophisticated level of load profiles that you could possibly get. And we think that that's important, as I said, because green energy, the way I'd like to describe it is, you know, 10 years ago we were all, some of you are probably on your cell phone right now, and the, I'm fading in and out, and you might get bad signal, where 10 years ago that would never have happened to you. You were using the landline and it was 100%. But the benefit of cellular communications is so strong that you're, you're willing to live with a little bit of service level as long as it kind of works. Um, it's the same with the green energy solutions. Customers are willing to go green energy because it just cost 50% less as the business case showed. So I just saved half the budget for my, my town council who's trying to buy this system. Um, as long as I get the service level. So I've saved half the budget. I've gone green. And, um, but I, I, want, I still want the light on 365 days of the year. The problem is in January when you're going to have two weeks without sun. And we say, okay, so just dim the light by 25%. And, and you're still going to have light. It's 2 o'clock in the morning in the wintertime. Nobody's outside anyways, but you have the capability. So we give you the tools to do that. And we actually give you the ability to do a week profile for the whole week or a weekday and a weekend. So if I was to go into load one, and I can do two different lights. So if you, for example, decide to do a pathway light and a street light on one pole, or if you decide to do street lights and security cameras, you can configure them both. But um, you're allowed to you come in here and you can pick whether or not you want to have a weekday and weekend profile or all seven days are the same. Um, and um, you can adjust um, the profile to be a light, which is operate normally, or always on for a security camera, or you can turn it off, those kinds of things you have the ability to do. Then you can come in and you can divide it up into a um, uh, number of phases. So we support three different phases plus a dawn phase. Each individual phase can have its own program. Um, so in theory, you could have four different phases overnight. And the, each phase, you can either decide to take a time-based phase or a length-based phase. Most off-grid systems are only length-based. So you'll say, OK, for the first five hours after dusk, I want it this way. Well, the problem is that if you're in uh, the northern United States right now, five hours after dusk is from 9.30 at night until um, 1 30 in the morning, but five hours after dusk in December is from 5 o'clock till 10 o'clock. So instead of using a length-based system, you might use a time-based system as an example, where here, for example, we said I want a time-based system. I want it to go uh, until 3 o'clock in the morning. So phase one, you might say midnight, for example. So phase one um, ends at 3 o'clock in the morning, and we've decided to have it at 70% dimness. Because the system can give you more energy than you thought you were going to have at the engineering point, we often sell a higher powered light than was actually spec'd because we tell the customer it's the same cost for a higher powered light and you may, might find that you have more energy and therefore you can even give better service than you thought you were going to have. So we have a lot of people who will hire more powered light and then you know change the dimming profile to figure out what they want. The second one, so this is an example of a second phase where I happen to go for a um, phase two ending at 315, uh, fully dimmed off. I can change the dimming profile. I can also add a motion detector into the system. So if I want a motion um, um, uh, event, I can, I can do that. It's not enabled for this particular one. But I could, for example, have the light on 100% till midnight. And then from midnight till 4 AM, I have it at 50%, and it goes to 100% when there's motion detected. Um, and then from 4 AM you know, in the morning, the early workers, we want it back onto another profile. So this just gives you an idea of what it is. Um, and that's a basic overview of Horizon and the types of controls that you get um, from the system. One of the nice things about Horizon is um, just trying to make sure it clicks here. There we go. Um, so you need the engineers to manage the system and the support. But it's also important as you're doing good green things for the community to communicate that. So the other thing that Horizon does is it provides an interface to your website. And this is an example of a customer, Perennial Sustainable Solutions. Um, they have it. At, that was the one where the light had gone out during, it was the only light that was on during the big flood. Um, so they have this on their website. So when customers come into their front lobby or when they come to their website, they can see that it's a green 
clean energy, you know, sustainable company, and this shows them from a marketing perspective of what it is. So Horizon provides the ability to have this kind of a, um, a feature and benefit back to the town to tell them what the, you know, why it mattered to them and, and, and why they benefited. Because oftentimes they just want it to work and they don't, you know, they don't get all excited about the features that the engineers get, um, but this is also a benefit. So we've tried to address both customers. So just to um, uh, summarize, why do you need to know about smart off-grid when you're looking at off-grid? You need to be able to remotely manage the power systems. You want monitoring alarms so it tells you when there's a problem and it's smart about it. It tells you, hey, your batteries need to be replaced or hey, your batteries don't need to be replaced. They just need to have equalized charges done a little bit more frequently to last the extra last year of their life. Um, so you've got to be able to do remote testing and management of it, and that way when you do have a service crew going out there, he doesn't have to have any specialized training and cost you, you know, more money than a normal maintenance crew. And at the point of installation, you just want it to be really easy, so it's plug and play and all that stuff. A little bit of information about us. So Illumian is our off-grid streetlight. Um, our company name is Clear Blue Technologies. We make the actual smart off-grid technology. So our piece of this solution is the brains of the system. As I mentioned earlier, any light that you want to go with is totally fine. And we're very focused on it's got to work, it's got to be reliable, and we put our money where our mouth is. It's pretty hard to hide that a system doesn't work when there's 24 by 7 monitoring on that system. So we stand behind every system that we ship. And that's the presentation. Um, my contact, my name is Miriam. You can email me at miriam at clearbluetechnologies.com if you have any uh, follow-on items or if you'd like a copy of this presentation. We also do one-on-one -on -one webinars with customers. So if you wanted a wider team and group in your, in your, in your, um, in your area to have this presentation, um, I'd be most happy to give one-on-one -on -one presentations. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to some questions that, uh, um, people might have, um, if you want to just put up your hand. Uh, while I'm waiting for those questions, I uh, one of the questions we get is how much is the ongoing monitoring uh, cost? When we sell you an Illumiant system, um, we include in the one-time cost three years prepaid of the monitoring and communications. So the first three years is included in the one-time cost. You won't have anything in your operating budget. Um, at the end of the three years, you would then pay what the ongoing uh, monitoring costs are. And so if you're just doing a small few polls to start as a project, a per poll cost would be $40 per year for um, the uh, Horizon monitoring and communicate, monitoring capability. And then we add on what the communications costs are. Most customers go, you can either go Wi-Fi or cellular. Um, most customers go cellular because sometimes getting their IT department to connect to the Wi-Fi from the building out to the, the, the poles is, is too complicated. The cost of cellular is coming down significantly. As of right now, it's about $4 per month. So we're talking about under $50 per year. So after the first three, so it's all included the first three years. And after the first three years, you'd be looking at $40 for, her, uh, for Horizon plus uh, if it's today, another $48 for the communications cost, um, but we do see that coming down, so I wouldn't be surprised if we were talking about 30 bucks a year by the time we get there for one poll. If you do a project with multiple polls, five or more polls, we mesh them together, and at that point, your cellular costs are about $1.50 per month per poll. So you're talking about $18 a year for cellular communications to a poll and $40 for the monitoring, so under $60. Um, a service call costs you at least $200 before you start. So if you have one service call in three years, you've paid, if you've avoided one service call in three years, you've paid for the cost of the monitoring. Are there any other questions? We have a question. How did you measure how many trees were saved? That came up on the, on the digital monitor. There is a, I can follow up with a small note if the person sends you the email, Mia, but there's a calculation that is generally used in industry that so many, it's a per kilowatt hour um, number, so how many kilowatt hours you save equals 
this many CO2 pounds equals this many trees. I can send you what that calculation is. The numbers that we have used are kind of an average number across the U.S. There is um, um, different numbers for different states, so depending upon you know how green your state is and it, you know, how far the power is, it could be higher or lower, but it's basically a conversion from kilowatt hours to trees, and there's a standard formula for it. Thanks. We have another question, and it's what can you say about government rebates for green energy? So there are a lot of federal and state rebate programs. Um, I believe that Mia will have given you some sources on her website, but if you go to the Illumiant.com website, we have a link to a third-party website which lists by state. They keep it fairly up to date because there are hundreds of different programs. There are both federal and state programs available in most states across the country. Um, and if you go to the Illumiant.com website and then click on um, um, click on uh, um, uh, that link, it'll take you to tell you what the different um, uh, programs are that are available in your area. If you wanted to talk to Kevin at Downers Grove, he was able to get a $300,000 grant which paid for 50% of their $600,000 cost, and he understood actually like what does it take and how you do the paperwork and who you talk to, and he's very helpful. He's a real evangelist wanting to have everybody else kind of go with what he's done, so I know he'd be very happy, and we could give you an email introduction if you wanted some extra help on that. It's a fantastic resource. Thanks. Just a reminder, if you do have a question, you can either raise your hand or type it into the question box in the control panel. If there are no other questions at the moment, um, Miriam, I think you did a wonderful job summarizing all of the information about smart off-grid solar lighting and security. Um, we have your contact information on the screen so people can follow up with you. Oh, it looks like we have one other question. It says, I've heard there may be issues with light levels. Is that an issue with your product? So um, LED technology, as with any new technology, requires you to actually do a fair amount of research and, and look at it. My under we, we do not we, we sell lights, but we're not lighting companies. We support three or four different light types. Um, you can go with King Luminaire, LED Roadway, or uh, GE, or Leotac, um, but any third-party light that you wanted, whether it was Philips. So you, you have the ability to choose the LED light that you would like to go with with our system. So we can sell you a pull and power pack or just a power pack, and you can pick your own light that you've already picked. So if your engineers have gone through that process. The LED technology has evolved quite a bit. So if you go back about two or three years ago, it was still not proven. There were stories that some of them were not good, but it's it's changed rapidly. And my understanding, and this is just my personal from what I've understood, now the technology is ready for mainstream, and you see larger and larger adoption projects where people are saying that it's good. Um, the city of LA, for example, is I think doing 500,000 lights replacement, and they they did many years of pilots and got to a point. So there are really good quality LED lights, and I think in general the industry has said, yeah, the time is now, let's move to LED. Um, what I will tell you is LED lighting is a little bit different than regular lighting, and it's just your personal experience at home. And so um, it gives, in many cases, a, a more brighter light. So one of the things that's happening is people are revisiting whether or not they need as powerful a light because an LED light is actually um, more um, clear. So the conversion factor, if you used to have a high pressure sodium, those numbers are changing, but always you know, more to the benefit of LEDs. So I think the short answer is you can pick which one you want. There are now reputable, strong, mainstream products um, available in the market. You've got a choice of many of them. The ones we carry, the feedback we've had from people we've talked to, um, for example, we carry King Luminaire decorative lights, and they are everywhere throughout the United States. Uh, King Luminaire is manufacturing in Kansas, Ohio, and Alabama, um, and and you know the city of Monterey uses them. A big, you know, there's a fair amount of deployed quality LED lights that they why customers are happy. 
They also have decorative, right? So they actually have the pendant light and the Victorian post top light and other different options rather than just a more commercial highway uh, cobra head. So the options are out there for you, and you know you definitely have to look at what what's good and what's not. Uh, but I do think that there's a fairly large group of reputable tier one lighting manufacturers today for LED. So do you assist with helping ID the proper light given the various vendor choices? Yes, we do. So um, we have a distribution network of uh, local uh, lighting agents and specialists which would support your area. They are our agents and resellers and distributors and they actually provide um, the advisory and consulting services to help you do, the, we'll do the lighting analysis with them, they'll do the lighting analysis for you, they'll show you the different options and talk to you about which are the better technologies in the marketplace. Um, so we've tapped into the lighting expert industry to help make sure that you pick a product that you're happy with. I think the key thing is that many jurisdictions are starting to look at it. So we've had many people come to us and say, well, but I've, you know, we've done the whole town. We spent three years figuring out which one we wanted. And maybe not three years, maybe they went through a six-month process. You know, can we use that light? And the key thing about Illumiant is, is you have more freedom to pick the light you want to go with, um, which you may have already standardized on. Uh, but if you haven't standardized on it, you want to pick. Um, we've had proven experience, as I said, with uh, Leo Tech, um, GE, uh, King Luminaire, and LED Roadway. They're all tier one good products um, and well accepted in the industry. And we can put you in touch with a, a lighting agent local to your area uh, to work with you on a quote and a lighting design for the particular project that you're doing to make sure you get the right coverage. Great. We do have another question. It's, will you send a link to the on-demand webinar? Sure. Absolutely. I think, uh, Mia, you said that it was going to get posted. It will. It will be posted on NARC's website, on our partnership website, and we'll be sending out a follow-up email within 24 hours to everyone who registered. And uh, if you'd like, we can include the link in that follow-up email. That would be great. Are there any other questions? Mia, just because uh, some of the questions, what we could also include is um, we have two white papers. One is a total cost of ownership analysis, that spreadsheet that I went through of what the costs were. And the second was a, a case study of Earl Row Provincial Park and why they went with it and what they did. So we can also give that to you if you want to attach that to the email when you send it out. That'd be wonderful. We'd be happy to do that. Great. If there's any follow-on questions after we get off the phone, uh, my email is right here, Miriam at clearbluetechnologies.com, and we thank you very much for your time and interest today. We'd love to hear feedback on what you and your town communities uh, think of this product and opportunity, and if you want to do any one-on-one -on -one webinars or have any follow-on questions, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And thank you so much, Miriam. We really appreciate you being with us today. Like I said, we'll be sending out the link to the webinar within the next 24 hours, so be on the lookout for that. And thanks, everyone, for your attendance, and we look forward to your participation in future webinars. Thank you. So I'm going to stop.